Welcome to my channel. Oh my god, okay, no, that's an out. Hey everybody. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hi. Hi everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I wasn't sure what to do for my first video and I was kind of really nervous about it because I've been thinking about making a YouTube channel for a while, but I've always been like, bitch, nobody's gonna want to see that. But now I'm like, fuck it, cause so why not? So basically today, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 favorite records that I own on vinyl. Uh, I figure learning about a person's music case is like the best way to get to know them, kind of. Not really the best way, but like one of the ways that you can get to learn about a person. And I figured I'd share that with you. So it's kind of like a getting to know you through your music and what you own. But, uh, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> so, I put my records from 10 to 1. So basically, like, my 10th favorite, my 9th favorite, 8th favorite, blah, 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 as you do. So, for my 10th favorite record that I own, I picked Eric Clapton's Rainbow Concert. I love... For my 10th favorite record, I chose Eric Clapton's Rainbow Concert. This record is so fucking good. I love it so much. And there's a bunch of amazing songs on this. I think he does, yeah, he does a cover of Little Wing, Bad, Drill It Over, you know, just a bunch of amazing songs. It, re it was released in 1973, I believe. And this was after his two year hiatus of not really doing much, you know, recovering from his heroin addiction things of that nature. The only time I think he did something before this record was when he did the concert for Bangladesh and that was for George Harrison so he was kind of like friends so he was like okay I'll do this for you man and George was like Ugh. so yeah that's <laughs> that's this record definitely would recommend purchasing. I got this as a gift my aunt she was giving away like her old records and she just had like this huge box of records and was like Ava you're into old things take it and i'm like i am thank you so yeah that is that record <laughs> record number nine is heart little queen i love this record as well which is why i chose it <laughs> it is beautiful i mean just the songs barracuda love alive say hello just a bunch of those songs just absolutely phenomenal along with the cover art I'm a huge sucker for cover art. This is beautiful. I I am obsessed. <laughs> Ann Wilson, please bless me with your vibes one day. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this record was believed oh this record was released in 1977, I believe. Um, if you're into Led Zeppelin, you'll love this record. It has all their kind of like hard rock sound with like if you know the song barracuda like ooh barracuda and it also has their acoustic sound it just it just it's very led zeppelin very 70s folk rock very beautiful definitely recommend number Number eight, <laughs> number eight for my favorite records is Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. This record is definitely one of a kind. Um, not to mention the album artwork, which is absolutely stupendous. So here's this, and then you open it up and it kind of reminds me of like a newspaper old circus type of thing. And then you can open it up another layer and it's just all, oh girl, this is not happening. Oh my God. If you can see it and my face is covered. <laughs> just all uh, beautiful photos of the tour. It really is a one of a kind record. Um, it's from their tour in 1970 and this was released in 1970, I believe. Um, Leon Russell is on this record, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, a lot of, if you're into Otis Redding, Ray Charles, things of that nature, you'll love it. But also if you're into things like the Rolling Stones, they have, um, I think they actually have the Beatles cover of uh, A Little Help For My Friends, 
which is just gorgeous um, on this. I feel like you would know it if you know Joe Cocker or if you've heard, like, I think he was in a bounty commercial. Like, bye for help for my friends. Beatles are like my favorite band of all time, so thanks Joe Cocker. And for number, what number are we on right now? Eight. Number seven of my favorite records is Hair. And if you don't know what Hair is, it was a musical really uh, put onto Off-Broadway in 1967. Genuinely beautiful music. A lot of its music was covered. Um, you might know songs like Aquarius, like, This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And I don't think you want me to sing that. <laughs> and you also probably know Hair, like, my phone stopped recording, so I didn't get to finish that. Basically, just listen to hair. And so, time to go to my, I don't even know what number this is. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out at some point. <laughs> my next favorite record would be Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. I love this record to death. It was released in 1977, I believe. And in my opinion, it was like, it, it had to be one of the godfathers for 80s kind of hair metal ballads, you know, with the long kind of um, beautiful lyrics, beautiful instrumentals, you know, things of that nature. Like, it just really contrasted a lot of the music that was coming out of that time from rock, you know, a lot of prog rock, a lot of Pink Floyd 10 minute, 11 minute songs that were filled with instrumentals and some lyric, but his songs, they were like eight, 10 minutes but they were filled to the brim with just beautiful, beautiful lyrics. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, no wiggle room in this album for like a, um, you know, any filler songs, any songs that are like, eh, we'll just throw this in there. I mean, all of these songs, you could tell the workmanship that went into them. And fun fact, Todd Rundgren produced this album. And if you know me, you know we love Todd Rundgren in this house. So yeah, 10 out of 10, recommend Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. My next album that is one of my favorites of all time is Donovan, Hurdy Gurdy Man. I love, love, love Donovan. He is my magic prince. He is, if Paul McCartney never existed, my next man. Like, I love him to death. Hurdy Gurdy Man was released in 1968, I believe, and it just has phenomenal songs on it. Um, obviously, Hurdy Gurdy Man, Jennifer Juniper, uh, Sunny Day, you know, just very calm, soothing background music, just things of that nature. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And Jennifer Juniper, obviously written about Jenny Boyd, Patty Boyd's sister, you know, just really interesting history behind the music, really interesting man behind the music. 10 out of 10, recommend. Next album, which is a favorite of mine, is Woodstock, the original soundtrack for the, um, the festival. Um, if you know, it is 2019 which is Woodstock's 50th anniversary and I really really hope to go to the 50th anniversary festival but I was looking at like the ticket prices I was like why 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 uh -uh. no thank you ma'am <laughs> um you know kind of nerve-wracking but my fingers are crossed that I can go I've been saving up that change trying to save the money to go but anyways, uh, on this record, I mean, if you know Woodstock, you know who was there. Santana, Joe Cocker, The Who, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Jefferson Airplane, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Joan Baez. I mean, just fill to the brim with just talent. Absolute master oh, masterpiece. I love, love, love this record with all of my heart and just listening to it I feel like I can like get the vibe of like what it was like to be there it was it's really incredible so yeah oh also this was released in 1970 throwing it out there <laughs> my next favorite from the love of my life Paul McCartney Paul McCartney and Wings Ram 
I love this record. This record was released in 1971, I believe. Let me just check myself on that, if it says it anywhere. No? All right, well, if I'm wrong, somebody comment. <laughs> but this was released in 1971. It was about a year after the Beatles broke up and all that legal stuff was going on with, you know, them feuding and blah, 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 bada bing. And Paul just wanted to release something creative and beautiful and I, love the solo album. Paul McCartney is one of my favorite solo careers from the Beatles. He is my favorite Beatle, which makes me very biased, but I am so happy to have this album. The artwork in it and inside of it is just fucking incredible. Love it to death. I love Linda McCartney with all my heart. Um, and if you know, there was some tea with <laughs> some tea with Paul McCartney and John Lennon because Paul released a song uh, Too Many People and John Lennon thought it was a diss on him and he was like bro fucking square up and Paul McCartney was like I have kids and a wife and I'm too mature for this and John was like and I was like Oof. so yeah <laughs> that's that record and next and one of my favorite of all time, regardless of having it on vinyl, having it anywhere, is The Land Lies Down on Broadway by Genesis. This record is absolutely phenomenal. I am a sucker, sucker for concept albums. I love, you know, all concept albums. Let's take, for example, um, Tommy by The Who, Sgt. Pepper's, The Beatles, um, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I just love things with some kind of plot or some kind of overall message. The Wall, obviously, come on, The Wall, one of the best concept albums of all time. We love her, but I don't have her on vinyl. But anyways, back to Land Lies Down on Broadway. Um, basically, the plot of this is about a um, teenage boy named Rail living in New York City and basically him going through this existential crisis about his life, his sexuality, his, you know, his everything. It was super psychedelic, super prog, super interesting. And um, Genesis, especially Peter Gabriel, absolutely inspired. I mean, absolutely incredible. I mean, Peter Gabriel was really just such, such a genius in my opinion. I absolutely love this album definitely definitely recommend so yeah and now my number one album that i own is todd rundgren a wizard a true star how do i count the ways that i love this album i've okay how do i explain it okay it is so underrated and so inspired and just so unique i've never heard another album totally like it before this time i mean it is just absolutely genius i mean the album artwork oh hi vinyl coming out please help me it was at that point that i literally gave up on life as i saw my entire life flash before my eyes um it stopped recording literally right then because I freaked out and actually my record was not scratched or hurt in the making of this video and I feel blessed for that. So yeah, long story short, love Todd Rundgren. That's about it. Um, didn't have any more footage so here's a picture of Paul McCartney. Thank you so much for watching this train wreck of a first video. You are golden. Love you. Stay beautiful. Oh.